furry, furry eyes will wink in your direction. We will throw you all a kiss that's filled with sweet affection. If you keep applauding for us, we will give a better show. A great big howdy do from the ladies of the chorus just for you. Want to go on a date? Oh, he's a swell guy. Crazy to meet you. Oh, when are you going to stop being tied to your old lady's apron strings? Why don't you let the kid go out and have some fun before her hair turns as gray as yours? I don't mind her going out, Bubbles, but not with your particular kind of friends. Of course, if she wants to go, it's all right with me. But I don't think she wants to go. OK, mother. I'll just get one of the others to go along. Now, which one of you ladies wants to go on a blind date? That's for me. Wait a minute. I'm going to make some coffee. Would you like some? No, thanks. Well, how about some crackers and milk? I don't think so. What's the matter, honey? When are you going to let me feel grown up? Letting you go out with Bubbles Liver and her men friends. Would that make you feel grown up? No, I don't mean those kind, but I never go out with anyone. Do you feel bitter about that? Not bitter, Mother. Well, why should you want to go out on a blind date with some middle-aged guy who's probably married and has a family? There you go, judging people, criticizing them when you don't even know them. You always do that, Mother. Look, darling, I'm, I'm only... sick of the idea of not being able to go anywhere or do anything without the written consent of my mother. I'm tired of being treated like a child. I'm going to bed. No, if I gotta do one more show, I'm gonna drop dead. I can't make it. I can get so I can't go out at night. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Eh, yeah, shut up. So I went out and that cab driver forgot to park. Date. And he says to me, I'd like to see your show, baby. How about a couple of passes? The nerve. And the guys I go out with don't want passes. They just make them. Speaking of passes, I've been knocking down so many lately, I feel like an all-American. Get a load of them lilacs. Jerry, them ain't no lilacs. Of course like not. That? Those are snapdragons. On her, they look good. Yeah. Hi, Peg. Hi, Bubbles. Like it? It's lovely. You know, you could have something like that, too. That party still wants to meet you, and he's awfully generous. Why don't you go away and leave Peggy alone? I'll speak for myself. Oh, the voice of the turtle, finally coming out of your shell. Oh, go crawl back into the woodwork. Why, you gray-haired old hag. Shut your mother, I'll slap it shut. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, no? Call my mother an old hag. You, you, hag, let go. Let me go. Madison Swagger. Can't get away with this. Just get her out of here. That's all. Okay. Oh. 
okay. A fine thing, fighting like a couple of alley cats. What are you trying to do, give burlesque a bad name? Well, if you think I'm... I'm not supposed to think. I'm the stage manager. My job is to get this show on. Now beat it on stage, all of you. Can't you hear the overture? Come on, places, everybody. Come on, now fix your makeups and get up there. You ever see anybody hurry you? No, no rush yeah. out. Fire, oh, hurry you. Oh, you're waiting. You two, get dressed. Oh, you're ordering around. What do you want me to do? Say please? I ain't one of your stooges. Okay, so you're the big attraction with this turkey and you get top billing. So if you'd have stayed in your dressing room and let these kids alone, there wouldn't have been no trouble. So the show is about to start. So get out there and get dressed. Is that so? Well, I ain't going out there. I'm quitting. Right now, this minute, see? This turkey can fold for all I care. Hey! Maybe you can get that old hag to go on to my place. Oh, she ought to kill him with her corny wig and her bones cracking. Homemade. Joe, I'm sorry. Forget it. Bubbles just walked up. Walked out? Yeah, quit. That's tough. I want you to go on and do a number. Me? Sure, you can still go out there and knock the customers cold like you used to. That was years ago, Joe. Let's face it. Yeah, I'll... leave us face it, May. The show must go on, remember? Okay, it'll go on. a girl. Use Bubbles' dressing room. The costumes are all in there. What did Joe want? Peggy, you're going on a bubble spot. What? What happened? Bubbles just walked out. But, Mother... Baby, you know the number back. I'll have the orchestra change the key, and you can use Bubbles for some. Anyone can see I love you. Anyone can see I care. The way I hold your hand and smile in your direction tells the world my heart is filled with nothing but affection lock me in your arms forever that's the place i want to be so anyone can see that i belong to you and you belong to me That's too good for this turkey. You put one over on me, May. Aren't you glad? Yes, I am. And the kid stays in that spot. Thanks, Joe. taking my Cleveland cousin tonight, Pete. It's all set. We're going to see Peggy Martin. Excellent. Who's Peggy Martin? She's the new darling of Burlesque. Burlesque? Yeah. Have you ever seen one? I can't say I have. Oh, you <laughs> haven't lived. <laughs> oh, well, well, let's live. Boy, Randy, we're going to get you initiated. How about it, Pete? You remember the way? Do I remember the way? Boy, I ought to. <laughs> I get my mail there. <laughs> It was cold outside of Tiffany's. I was shivering in the storm. I walked in and had 
Mr. Gentleman, could I please keep warm? He asked me, how come a baby doll has no comfy place to go? So I told that kindly gentleman my tale of woe. Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy to keep her worry free. Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy, but where's the one for me? If he hasn't got a million, then a half will do. Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy. Could my dad, daddy be you? She's lovely, isn't she? Yeah, don't get any ideas. Yeah, cousin, she's got a mother. Yeah, everybody's got a mother. But her mother's a one-man security council. Right. She knocks off wolves like they were clay pigeons. What'd you say? Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy With silver in his hair Every baby needs a dad, dad, daddy Who has some gold to Any help? I don't think so. Do you like my hair? Turn around, honey. Come in. For you, Miss Martin. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Oh, it's beautiful. From that bookmaker again? No, I don't think so. He sends violets. Thank you for a most enjoyable evening. Who is it? There's no name. No name? Well, that's strange. I wonder who it could be. Oh, probably some politician who's bashful or... Married. <laughs> For you, Miss Martin. Thank you, Mr. Gray. You'll soon be known as the Orchid Lady. <laughs> to a charming young lady. Would love to meet you. Another one. Whoever he is, he certainly has gone to the orchid market. What does he say this time? An ardent admirer. Hmm, another orchid. He must be a florist. Are you sure you never met him? No, but I'd like to. Just to see what kind of a character he is. No, he's probably very dull. Well, darling, I've got some shopping to do. I'll see you at the apartment. Okay, mother. Florist. I think so. Something for yourself, Kyle. 
cocktail party, opera. Oh, a beautiful orchid. Oh, the one on the box. That's an order. Oh, I've just got to tell this. You know there's a fellow comes in here every evening and sends one of them orchids to his girl? A real good customer. I'll say, and good looking, too. He should be here any minute. Lives in the hotel. He comes in every evening around six without fail. Pays cash, has it sent, and never signs his name for the card. How strange. And you know what? This will kill you. He sends it to Peggy Martin, the burlesque queen, over at the Rome Theater. No. So help me. Can you imagine sending all them orchids to a burlesque queen? No telling about a man's taste, I always say. <laughs> well, dearie, have you made up your mind what kind of flowers you want? Oh, let me see. Oh, carnations. Okay. One dozen, two dozen. Oh, one will do. One dozen? No, no. Just one carnation. That'll be ten cents, please. Thank you. Want me to put it in a box for you? No, thank you. I'll take it like this. Good afternoon. Nice day, wasn't it? Oh, very nice day. Yes, it was. You'll be sure to send this right away, won't you? Wouldn't you rather deliver it in person? No, thanks. I... Miss Martin. Yes. Well, aren't you going to give me the orchid? The orchid? Oh, yes, yes, the orchid. Thank you. Thank you. And your name's still not on the card? It's Randy. It's Randy what? It's Randy what? Oh, Randy Carroll. Nice to meet you, Mr. Carroll. Thank you. I've been planning for a week what I'd say when I met you. And what did you decide? I... I hadn't decided yet. Miss Martin, I... Oh, Miss Martin. Yes, Mr. Carroll? Would you go to dinner with me? I'd love to. Oh, so would I. Oh. They're dead out there tonight, girls. Come on, now, let's wake them up. Peggy! Joe, has Peggy come in yet? I ain't seen her, May. Well, I wonder what happened to her. She didn't even come home to dinner. What? She's on stage in 15 minutes. Sorry, Joe. Step on it. You're practically on. I'll make it. six and then had dinner at the cafeteria. I phoned home a little after six. And oh, Mother, I had the most wonderful time. And he isn't a character or a wolf at all. He's a perfect gentleman. You should have seen the expression on his face when he saw me. Who are you talking about? Oh, Randy Carroll. And who was Randy Carroll? Well, he's a fellow that's been sending me all those orchids. And he's anxious to meet you. You're on, Miss Martin. Coming, Joe. I'll tell you all about it later, Mother. Please tell Miss Martin that Randy Carroll's waiting. Yes, sir. Say, so, Dad, are you the one that delivers the flowers to Miss Martin? Uh huh. Thanks. Are you the one that sends them? Uh huh. Must be expensive. Oh. Not... Oh. Well, yes, they are. You've been a big help to me. So have you. <laughs> then we had dinner, and he asked me if he could see me tonight after the show, and I said he could. Is that all right, Mother? Come in. Well, Mr. Carroll, to see you, Miss Martin. 
Well, tell him I'll be right out. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Greg. Uh, please have Mr. Carroll come in. Yes. You said he was anxious to meet me. Well, yes, he is. Well, all right, then. Won't you come in? Hello. Hello. Oh, Randy, I want you to meet somebody. Yeah. Mother, this is Randy Carroll. Mother? How do you do? So glad to know you. I hope it's all right. Uh, my coming in here, I mean. Of course it's all right. First time I've ever been backstage. You're not disappointed. Oh, no, it's wonderful. Mother, Randy, I mean, Mr. Carroll wants me to go to the Waldorf roof tonight. Yes, uh, will you, uh, will you join us? No, thanks. You two run along and have a good time. All right, I won't be late. Good night, Mrs. Martin. Good night. Are you sure you won't join us? Well, good night. <laughs> you in bed? Oh, oh, I was reading. I must have dozed off. Do you know what time it is? No, what time is it? It's after three. Oh, good heaven. Well, did you have a good time, dear? Oh, wonderful. Where'd you go? Club Embassy. Oh, that's nice. Well, I guess I'll go to bed. Mother. Yes, dear? I... I want to talk to you. Won't it keep till morning? No. It's about Randy. What about Randy? He... He... Peggy, he... What are you trying to say? He asked me to marry him. Uh... Oh, what did you say? I told him he'd have to get your consent. And what did he say to that? He's going to ask you tomorrow. Oh, you will say yes, won't you, Mother? And if I don't? 
I suppose you'll marry him anyway. I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. Well, let's go to bed, darling. We'll talk about him in the morning. Hello, Mrs. Martin. Hello, Randy. Come in. Thank you. I, I suppose you know why I'm here. Yes, I know. Peggy told me that you asked her to marry you. That's right. And you want my consent? Very much. You're a fine boy, Randy. I like you. And Peggy loves you. But it's all right. Oh, just a minute. I haven't finished. I have no objections to you, Randy. I'm sure you know that. And I want Peggy to marry the man she loves. Usually, that's all that matters when two people in love and want to get married. Sometimes there are other things to be considered. What could be more important than that Peggy and I love each other? Well, I'll, I'll try to explain. Peggy doesn't belong in your world. She belongs in the show world, burlesque. Burlesque queen, that's what people call her. What difference does that make? You don't care. But what about your mother and your friends? What will they say when you bring a burlesque girl home and introduce her to your wife? They'd better say it's wonderful. And how do you think Peggy will feel when she's snubbed by them? When she sees that your mother is ashamed of her? Peggy's happiness means everything in the world to me, Randy. And to me, Mrs. Martin. I'll make her happy. I'm sure you would. If it were entirely up to you. Look, if my friends won't accept Peggy, then I don't want them as friends. And if your mother won't accept her? That's impossible. You don't know mother. She'll love Peggy just as I do. Another young man said the same thing. Who was that? Peggy's father. Oh. And what happened? Well, I was just about Peggy's age. Very much in love. He was a fine, handsome boy. Alan Wakeley, the Boston Wakeleys. I was the happiest girl in the world. <laughs>
Ain't he the persistent one? That's Alan Wakeley, you dope. He's made steady. Oh, is that who he is? Get this. Say, Mr. Wakeley, ain't you got no home? Sure I have, but May doesn't live there yet. <laughs> Not bad. Quick on the trigger. Hello, Alan. Oh, you look beautiful, May. Thank you. You know, one of these days, you're going to throw this into deep center field. Oh, no. Not with my control. Oh, hey, how about my fielding average? <laughs> <laughs> Where'll it be tonight, Delmonico's or the Plaza? That little nook at Delmonico's. That's an idea. I've never proposed to you there, have I? And please, not tonight, Alan. I just don't understand you, May. You say you love me, and yet you won't marry me. It doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. But look, May, your reasons for not Must marrying me... Must we go me... through all that again? Darling, I've told you a thousand times, I don't give a rap what my friends think. If they won't accept you, then they can go to blazes. As for my mother, well, you just don't know her. She'll love you as much as I do. I refused Alan that night, and many nights after that. But he just wouldn't give up. There were dances and dinners and flowers. I couldn't have been happier. But always it was the same thing, until finally I... You agreed to marry him? Yes. I'll never forget that night. It was the night that Billy McKay and I broke in the new act. I bet you didn't think I was going to show up, huh? Did you see a big blind? A <laughs> <laughs> a big blonde came down and said, there's a big party upstairs. Everybody sing and dance. <laughs> You're too beautiful, kid. So I joined the party. But there always has to be a wise guy in every party. And there was one of them guys in this party. He made a few unnecessary remarks. <laughs> I want to see you right after this scene. I want to see you too. It's me, Billy. Come on in. Well, the scene went great, May. You know, I got something to ask you, and tonight's the night. Billy, congratulate me. Well, you're congratulated. What for? I'm getting married. Married? Uh-huh. Well, what do you know? I'm leaving the show Saturday night. Wakely. Yes. Well, I wish you luck. Only I don't know. I'm afraid oil and water don't mix. Oh, Billy, I think I know what you mean, but uh, Alan and I will work it out. Yeah, sure, you'll work it out. You know, I never told you, but not that it'll make any difference. But I've been in love with you for a long time myself. You're a swell guy. Yeah. Well, if it don't work out, well, of course it's going to work out. Oh, what do you want to tell me, Billy? Oh, uh, gee, I forgot what it was. Couldn't have been very important, huh? See ya. Uh, oh, closing night, we'll give you a swell party. I'll be the head waiter, I'll arrange everything. <laughs> I'm so crazy for you. So you see, Randy, I was warned. Somehow I felt that everything would be all right. Alan insisted on getting married first and tell his mother afterwards. He wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> and what a surprise it was. I was very happy those first few weeks in the home of Alan's parents. Everyone treated me like a queen. Until they found out I was a queen. A burlesque queen. Alan's mother was furious and his friends were horrified. There were terrible scenes after that. When I couldn't stand it any longer, I slipped out of the house one night and left Boston. And what happened to Alan? His father sent him off to Europe and had the marriage annulled. You never tried to get in touch with him? I had no reason to. Then what did you do? 
What could I do? I went back to the only thing I knew. Girl, ask. The act, poor kid. Is the doctor still in there? Yes, sir. Doc, how is she? It's all right. Nothing to worry about. Of course, she should not be working. Well, 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 what's wrong with her? Nothing wrong with her. She's going to be a mother, that's all. A mother? You mean right now? Right. Oh. <laughs> not right this minute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, poor well, what do you know? Peggy was born four months later. For a long time, we lived in theater dressing rooms. As soon as she was old enough, I put her in school. And I continued on in burlesque. But not as its queen. I became just one of the ladies of the chorus. <laughs> I was out front watching you. Kid, you're still the cutest. How do you feel, Mary? Oh, I'm fine. Do you look wonderful? Oh, I feel good, too. What are you doing here with the season on? Did the show close? No, the show's playing Boston this week. You weren't laid off. No, no, I quit. Look, let's get out of here. You this quit? Traffic, yeah, this traffic is like Grand Central Station. But Everybody... you can't afford to. You're not as young as you used to be, you know. Oh, I don't know. Besides, I got a few simoleons stashed away. It's like this. I got a letter from Peggy. She's graduating from high school. Yes, Billy, she is. Well, it wouldn't be an honest-to-goodness graduation without your old Uncle Billy, would it? So here I am. Same old Billy. Oh, cut it out. Hey, you embarrass me in you front of nuts. all these people. Look. Oh, I got a little present for Peggy's graduation. You think she'll like it? Oh, it's beautiful. She'll love it. Oh, but Billy, you shouldn't have done it. You can't afford it. Oh, it's nothing. It's a little thing I bought a long time ago. Uh, for Peggy, remember? Well, that's about all there is. After graduation, Peggy insisted on going to work, and she managed to get in the same chorus with me. That was her way of helping out. So you see, Randy, the marriage you proposed for Peggy didn't work out in my case, and it won't in yours. You're wrong. People are different today. They're more broad-minded about such things. Mother will accept Peggy for what she is. It won't work. Mrs. Martin, I hope you'll forgive me for saying this. But you have a mother complex. I'll consent to the marriage. On one condition. Yes, what is it? That you tell your mother you're going to marry Peggy Martin, a burlesque queen. I don't want you to misunderstand me. I agree that your experience wasn't a happy one. But I do think you're being very short-sighted to inject your bitterness into Peggy's future. I'll tell Mother. That was always my intention. Good day, Mrs. Martin. It's me, Mother. May I come in? Oh, yes, dear. Come in. Well, what are you doing up so early? Couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Something on your mind? Something you didn't tell me last night? Yes, and it's... It's very important. Randy, you're in love. How did you know? <laughs> it's very simple. You're just like your father. Every time he had anything on his mind, it was sure to be written on his face. Okay, you win. Well, anyhow, she... Don't uh, tell me. Let me guess. Hazel Langley. No. Hmm. Murtis Rogers? No, no. Anne Crawford? No, it's none of them, Mother. It's... No. Uh, well, then who is it? Peggy. Peggy Martin. Oh, the Boston Martins. No, just plain Martin, Mother. No social position. But does it make any difference as long as Peggy and I love each other? She's wonderful. And so's her mother. Well, can't you tell me something of the background? Background? Well, uh... I want you to meet them first, and when you get to know them, I'll tell you all about their background. All right, dear, if that's the way you want it. Why not invite them here to spend a couple of weeks with us? Oh, Mom, you always say the right thing. I love you. You know, you're a doll. <laughs> sure you've got everything? Just a few little things left in the bedroom. Well, 
Well, how's my little gal? Hi, May. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. We were afraid you wouldn't make it. Oh, I got your call, so uh, what's to do? You folks going someplace? To Cleveland. We're going to visit Randy's mother. She's invited us. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, you sure is, honey. We're leaving on the 210 train. Oh, Uncle Billy, I'm the happiest girl in the world. You'd better start thinking about coming to Cleveland to give the bride away. You bet I will. <laughs> I gotta finish packing, Uncle Billy. Well, I sure hope this works out. It will, Billy. Randy has told his mother we're from Burlesque. Burlesque? Seems I've heard of that. This must be the place. <laughs> Oh, you. Yes, we've lived in Cleveland all our lives. My husband started his business here. Of course, he had branch offices in New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. We saw a great deal of those cities in Europe, too. I suppose you're a native New Yorker. Oh, yes. What was your husband's business? A brokerage, Mother. Oh, really? Yes, he was a Boston man. Oh, we've some very dear friends in Boston. Do you know the Drummonds by any chance? Uh, no, Mrs. Carroll. Or the Peter Milners? Uh, no. What schools did you attend, my dear? Well, well, Mrs. Carroll, I, I... Excuse me, madame. Mrs. Bruce is on the telephone. Oh, will you excuse me? Randy, you didn't keep your promise. No, I didn't. But why, after I made it perfectly clear? Well, maybe I should have, but, well, I thought I'd tell Mother after she got to know you. Give her a chance to see for herself what kind of people you are. It was a mistake not to tell her. I don't think so. Maybe Randy's right, Mother. I hope so. Oh, I almost forgot. The gang's over at Roger Clark's. I want them to meet Peggy. Why, of course, dear. I know how anxious your friends are to see Peggy. Yes, they are. Come on, honey. See you later. Don't be late for dinner. We won't. We're going over to the Brewsters tonight to have a few hours of bridge. You do play bridge, don't you? Oh, I'm afraid not. I, I could never get interested in it. That's perfectly all right, my dear. There's always a little game of poker for those who are allergic to bridge. <laughs> Hi there, stranger. Hi. Seems to me I know you from someplace. Oh, yes. You're my mother. I believe that's it. Oh, it's so nice running into you again. Oh, mothers like that sort of thing. We should see each other more often. Maybe have lunch together someday. Well, I'll consult my date book. Oh, I know you're awfully tied up, but, um... Yes, but one must consider one's mother, you know. True. How true. Shall I see you at the dog show? I'll be the third Airedale from the left. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to see each other much these days, do we, dear? No, we don't. I've been seeing Randy constantly. Me socializing along with his mother. Gosh, the way she gets around makes my head dizzy. The Brewsters, the Lindsays, the cocktail parties and the bridge. It's like playing one night stands. It's exciting, though, meeting all these nice people and feeling you can be a part of them. Makes you happy, doesn't it, darling? Yes, but I only hope that it isn't all a dream and that someday I'll wake up and... Who is it? Randy, are you still up? Yes, Mother, come in. I shan't stay but a few moments. Sit down, dear. Oh, this must be pretty important. It is. Well, come on, give. It's about Peggy. Peggy. It is time we discussed it. Yes. I, uh, I was going to tell you, I, uh... I mean Peggy's engagement party. Engagement party? Oh, the engagement party. Yes, what well... do you think I meant? Oh, I thought that, uh, well, maybe you, uh, I don't know. Well, if being in love affects you like that, perhaps you'd better remain a bachelor. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't get any ideas like that. But honestly, I hadn't given a thought to the party. Men never do. Well, why should I worry about such things? When I've got a mother like you who does. Calm down, dear, and listen to me. Madam, you have my undivided attention, which includes listening. <laughs> well, we give the party here. We get an orchestra and some entertainment. You know, you're the only son I have. Salisbury? Oh, Salisbury! Have the decorators arrived yet? No, madam. I beg pardon, Mrs. Carroll. Mrs. Windrift on the phone. Oh, dear, and she'll talk for an hour. Well, here, you take this and arrange the room according to my diagram. And when the decorators do arrive, tell them I suggest the orchestra be placed, um, well, there, in the alcove. Yes? Well, how 
Who are you? I'm Ripper. You do? I mean, you all. I'm the decorator. <laughs> Uh, there's supposed to be three of you. That's right. Uh, but there's another man coming, sir. But uh, it'll only make two. Oh, uh, no. You see, I brought Junior along to help me. Say hello to the gentleman, Junior. Well, how little! Come in. This way, please. You see, we're a little short of health. You are very short of health. All the carpets ought to be up. The chairs to place against the walls. There are more chairs coming. The piano goes in the alcove. The floors must be wet. Hmm. Well, I was just wondering if it wouldn't be better to... Let's not quibble, dribble. Not dribble, ripple. All right, we're ready. All right, we're ready. Well, let's go. You know what to do. That must be the other man. That must be the other man. Hello. Is this the Carroll residence? Yes, come in. Don't just stand there. There's work to be done. Well, is this where the engagement party for Miss Martin is being held? Yes, yes, come in. Let's start work. But I don't think you understand. I understand perfectly. This way, please. This way, please. Here's your mail, Ripple. Probably oh, here. Looks like I'm here. Peggy, how are you? Hi, Amy. Hello, Billy. Mrs. Carroll, I want you to meet Mr. McKay. How do you do? How do you do? I'll have Salisbury look out for you. Salisbury? Randy, this is Uncle Billy. I'm glad to know you. I heard a lot about you. I heard a lot about you, too, Randy. Yes, Will you show Mr. McKay to his room? He's not here yet, Mother. Salisbury, this is Mr. McKay. <laughs> Mr. McKay. This way, please. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Windrift. I want you to meet my son's fiance, Miss Peggy Martin. And Mrs. Martin. How do you do? Oh, and I don't want you to miss this trio. Come on, let's all go in. When the jungle moon is shining bright High in the sky above The strangest noises fill the night When you bang these plight their love When they speak of love and passion, they'll just beat in rhythmic fashion. All you hear is clackety clop clop chop chop boogie bop boogie bop mama. Even if they whisper honey, what comes out is loud and funny. All you hear is clackety clop clop chop chop boogie bop boogie bop mama. Though it's loud enough when Johnny whispers to his Jane, just imagine what it sounds like down in lovers' lane. All together, love's expression sounds like drummers in jam session. All you hear is clackety clop clop chop chop boogie bop boogie bop mama. la 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 Just imagine waiting for a sweet and tender sigh. Then you hear a pop, pop, mop, mop. What a strange reply. Love is deafening, no wonder. Every kiss comes on like thunder. All you hear is packing and clock, pop, chop, chop, boogie, pop, boogie, pop, pop. He knew tattoo, 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 he knew tatt
when you bang his plot there. Clang, 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 Peggy. Hello, Bobby. How about a song? Folks, you all know Peggy Martin, queen of burlesque. Let's get her to sing a song. Did he say burlesque? That's what he said. Burlesque queen. Well, I am surprised. Imagine Randy getting mixed up with a girl like that. Didn't Randy tell his mother? No. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Carroll. Randy. Randy, please leave us alone. But I want to talk to Peggy. She'll see you later. Randy should have told his mother. You were right. And so was Uncle Billy. Yes, darling. Uncle Billy was right. Both times. Where's Peggy? Inside. She won't talk to me. She'll talk to me. Please, Randy. It's not Randy. It's Mrs. Carroll. Please open the door. Where do you think you're going? Home where we belong. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous? After what's happened? So you want to run away because a few narrow-minded people object to the way you've been earning your own living. You'd be willing to give up the man you love, everything, without a fight? Just what are you driving at? Running away would only make things worse. Peggy would be bitter and frustrated for the rest of her life. Now, our children love each other and want to get married. Does anything else matter? I should have told you. I promised Peggy and her mother I would. Well, but you didn't. Not that it would have made much difference anyway. Randy, take Peggy and her mother downstairs. Well, what about your friends? I'll take care of my friends. Hurry up now. Hurry, Randy. You know, Mrs. Carroll, I like the way you talk. Thank you. It's like an opening night. Just keep smiling and it'll keep them guessing. Well, this is it, Billy. Um, attention, attention, quiet everybody. We're going right on with the entertainment. But first, I want you to meet Mr. McKay, who will accompany the next number. Boys, I'll start it, and you kind of sneak in. A gal I knew loved wedding chimes, so she got married many times. At 60, she ran out of men, so she married the first one over again. You're never too old to do what you did. You're never too old to feel like a kid. Your back may be bent, your hair may be gray, but you're never too old till you're put away. Away, away, where everything is exquisite. Away, away. Relatives seldom visit. A gal I knew was young and sweet, and all she liked to do was eat. Today she does a circus act. She's so round and so firm and so fully packed. You're never too old to do what you did. You're never too old to feel like a kid. Your knees may be weak, you may have the gout, but you're never too old till they strike you out. Way out, way out, where no one is sour or solemn. Way out, way out, where they have no society column. At 25, Marie Lamar. 
became a famous burlesque star. At 50, she could wave a hip that would make a whole crew abandon a ship. You're never too old to do what you did. You're never too old to feel like a kid. You may need a cane and wear a toupee, but you're never too old till you're put away. Away, away, where everything is okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really more than I deserve after all these years. I suppose uh, you're saying to yourselves, well, not bad for an amateur. <laughs> but I have a confession to make. I'm uh, not really an amateur at all. I was also a lady of the chorus. Can you imagine? Adele Carroll, a chorus girl. Yes, isn't it exciting? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I haven't shocked you, my friends. Oh, no, Adele. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, shall we have some more dancing? Mother, you were wonderful. I didn't know you were on the stage. What shows were you with? She wasn't. She was never on the stage in her life. What? No, that was just her idea to make Peggy and Randy happy. But you shocked your friends. They can take a little shock now and then. Do them good. By the way, a double wedding of mother and daughter really would shock them. You know, you're never too old to do what you did. In your direction, we will throw you all a kiss that's filled with sweet affection. If you keep applauding for us, we will give a better show. A great big howdy do from the ladies of the chorus just for you. Your direction, we will throw you all a kiss that's filled with sweet affection. 